everyone hits a bump in the road. What do you do with it? Be inspired as we explore the ways people experience, navigate, and manage the ups and downs and twists and turns in this road trip called life. My guest today on Bump in the Road is Wendy Wagner, PhD. She has a Bachelor of Science in Psychology from Tufts University, a master's degree in transpersonal psychology from the Institute of Transpersonal Psychology, a PhD in transpersonal psychology from Summit University. She's also a master hypnotist and addictions counselor by the West Coast Institute of Addictive Studies and a mindfulness coach and doula. Most of all, Wendy is a fascinating person who's navigated more than a few bumps in the road. Welcome, Wendy Wagner. Welcome, Wendy Wagner. I'm so pleased to have you on Bump in the Road today. Um, let's start with your telling your story. <laughs> Pat, thank you. It's really fun to be here. <clears throat> you know, in reviewing all this after you asked me to do it, I thought, oh my God, my life was perfectly designed to talk about bumps in the road. It was like, <laughs> there almost been nothing but bumps in the road. And I think maybe everybody would say that, but it really seems like my life was designed to shake me up every single time I got the tiniest bit secure in anything. But one of the greatest savings came to me when I was about um, 29, 28, something like that. And um, my mother was in New York at the time, I think sort of socializing with a bunch of intelligentsia. And um, she started talking about something called the 20th century teachings of Christ which turned out to be The Course in Miracles. It was the original manuscript she finally gave me because I was so curious, what, what might Christ say in the 20th century? And in the very beginning, it promises to turn your perceptions 180 degrees from the way you're looking at things right now. And boy, did it deliver on that. And I, because I started so early with the course, I didn't have a lot of people to talk to about it. So I had to experiment with it very heavily. And I, and I really, I was so, so determined to find the truth of the course, whether it was true or not, because at some point it says, don't listen to a word we say, just experiment with this, try it out in life, see how it works. And that was the big, um, that was the proof was in the pudding for me, for sure. <clears throat> and one of the primary things the Course talks about is everything that comes to you is for your benefit. Now, that has been my, my shining you know, uh, star since I did the Course. And now it's 41 years later. And through experience, I can say that that is absolutely true. It's, it's never been incorrect. If I started looking at things as like, okay, how one, I attracted this because that's one of the other things the course teaches is you create your entire reality with thought, with what you're thinking. There are no neutral thoughts. Huge idea that every single thought we're having is either taking us to a much lower depressed place or a much higher blissful state. Um, so I began to ask myself, well, how did I attract this? If I, if I did get a bump in the road, and then I'd say, well, okay, there was two ways to look at it. It was either, oh, poor me, and why did the meh, 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 whining and crying about the whole thing and talking to friends about it, no, no, no. Or I could say, wait a minute, this came for my benefit. How is this for my benefit? Which completely changed the perspective on anything that happened to me. It's, it was more of a welcoming. And then the inquiry could happen in a very beneficial way. Then the inquiry opened way up. And I'll give you examples of that as I go on. But the second thing that the course gave, and this was unbelievably important, and one of the major blocks in our um, collective consciousness right now, which is that it is everyone's birthright to be able to hear divine guidance. Now, because, you know, we've got the Bible where it looks like, it appears that the only way you could hear guidance is if you're some sort of very special man. Very few women in the Bible were ever considered to be able to hear guidance. And so it's put on this huge pedestal that you have to be incredibly special and powerful and blessed to be able to hear guidance. But I started working on it really hard for a really long time and began to understand, again, because the proof was in the pudding, 
that I could access guidance. So this was, I wasn't alone with these giant bumps in the road. I was, I had a companion traveling with me saying, oops, don't put your foot there. No, 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 don't, best not, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but you learn to listen. That's the, that's the, the, the key exactly. piece. Exactly. Learn to listen and inquire. Keep inquiring until they find the meaning of the situation. And once the meaning was found, that was, that was really incredible. Then the other thing it taught me was, you know, when a bump comes along, here's what we traditionally do. This is the egoic way of looking at a bump in the road, which is to go, oh my God, I don't know what to do. I'm panicked. And then just sort of bumble through it. And then at the end go, hmm, what was that about? And then we look back and assign a meaning. And usually it's wrong. And what the course taught me to do was at the beginning of a confusing situation, go, what do I want to happen? What do I want to come of this? Changes everything. Am I a victim or am I a powerful being who has control? Has, you know, who knows how much control we really have? You know, the coronavirus is beginning to show us that there's a bigger picture here. And that's what I learned through my course of the Course in Miracles and all these 42 years or 41 years is that there's a bigger picture. I, there's a plan. I am being sh sort of shuffled around with this plan. And it really is for my benefit. That, and that philosophical perspective that everything that comes to you is for your benefit is a total game changer. Total. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, then, okay. So then, so for four, 35 years, I get, um, I've, really, really involved with the course and, you know, testing, testing, testing all the time. And then I get cancer. This was 2014. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is really the, you know, where the rubber meets the road. And then I had to really bring all these sort of ideas into my body and had to decide, are you the victim of this? Or or do you have some power? And that's when I started using the intentions. It's like, what do you want to learn from this? What do you want to, to gain from it? And since I took the perspective of everything that comes to you is for your benefit, ah, I, I found the most amazing inquiry because of that. Okay, why did I attract this? Just that alone is a huge inquiry. Um, and you're somebody who's eaten organic, taking yeah, good care yeah. of yourself forever. Yeah, exactly. Since I was 17, I've been eating organic, you know, so it was quite a shock. Um, but what the inquiry revealed, because I took this perspective, was a lot of subconscious ways I really wasn't happy and didn't even recognize it because it was, you know, routine and couldn't think of outside the box. And, um, but at one point, I did this amazing list where I was like, okay, you've attracted cancer. It, you could die from this. So I made this list of reasons you want to die, reasons you want to live. And, you know, it came very, I knew, I knew from the beginning I wanted to live, but it was very important for me to see the reasons I wanted to die. And then the entire remedy came from that list. It's like, this has got to change. This has got to change. This has got to change. Cause you're, this isn't making you happy. It's making you feel like, you know, your body's breaking down because these things aren't making you happy. So, um, that's the enormity of that kind of inquiry was those kinds of revelations. So I've been a psychologist since, uh, whew, since the 1980s and have been on a spiritual path since the 1980s and have been just heavy into self-inquiry. Yet cancer pushed me, because it was life and death, to realms within myself that I hadn't begun to touch. It was almost like I used to have these dreams all the time of this beautiful mansion with one door that I refused to go into. And cancer opened that door and pushed me through it. And that's the advantage of bumps in the road. They're there to help us get through parts where we would we would be too timid to go through the the portals if you will the initiation um let's see do you have any questions at this point well you know one of the things i wanted to talk to you about was um how ancient people have often looked at illness and illness as being a portal yes 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 and i i think that's such a powerful concept uh-huh 
No, it's, there is no doubt in my mind that it is. That it is if you use it correctly. It comes to you as a gift. If you can open the lousy wrapping and see, find the gift inside, it is, I still say cancer was the greatest gift I ever received as far as self-inquiry, self-knowledge, and, and the gifts it gave me for my future also. It prepare, prepared me beautifully for my future. How so? Well, because I saw how to work so there was this moment, it was amazing, where I was in the midst of, you know, this horrible panic about how was I going to make money? How, you know, because, you know, I was just completely, my future was annihilated as far as what I had planned, which I want to get back to, because that's one of the greatest gifts of COVID, by the way, um, and cancer. It's my future crumbled at my feet, which pushed me into the present a whole lot more. Um, now, what was I saying there? Oh, you were talking about how um, a, a bump in the road, in this case, cancer or COVID, just annihilates your future. Yeah, yeah, which is which is a hugely important gift to be forced to stay in the present. I couldn't fantasize about a future, but there was a, there was another train we were following before that that piece. Oh, talking about that? portals and ancient people and using illness to to really open self-investigation. Right, right. The gifts that it gave me. Well, it's absolutely true. But let's let's go back to COVID because I think it's timely. And for so many people, everything has just been destroyed, really. Where do you go from here? Well, here's the thing. Here's what I see is there's an enormous avoidance of the void. You look at the word, a uh, void, rather than, all right, so we're in a big void right now. We have all collectively gotten into the habit of using the future entirely too much to satisfy. When you think about, oh, I'm looking forward to this vacation, I'm looking forward to this new job, blah, blah, blah. It keeps us happy and excited. Suddenly that's gone. And this is an external type of excitement that really wasn't that great for us. It's being in the present is where we should be. So collectively, our complete future has crashed at our feet. We have no clue what's coming next. No one does. No clue. And that's our huge strength right now. Because on the edge of the void, which everybody avoids, and now we can't, we've been pushed into it, we will find that the void is the most creative place you can possibly be. And it's chock full of spirit. Everyone's terrified of it. And it's chock full of spirit. It's there on the edge of the void that you create your new reality. You begin to dream it, right? And then everything comes to you for your benefit. Take that perspective. Yes, yes, COVID. Woohoo. No, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm being a little exaggerated there, but I have found enormous benefit out of this um, because it gave me much more time to meditate and to be in nature. I'm thinking, God, my energy is so different after the last two months. And I realize I've been outside so much more. And that's a huge advantage. But, you know, as many people are talking about, I think our whole society is going to have to get reorganized financially, socially, and there's going to be terrible chaos until that happens. And it will be a slow process. We're all going to have to get comfortable with the void and begin to make friends with it and trust, trust guidance more right? <laughs> there is nothing else at this point. Is step by step saying, okay, what do I do now? <laughs> like that, you know? But I, I agree. It can be an enormous opportunity to really revamp one's life and reimagine one's life. Exactly. Exactly. And society's life. Like, like there's a guy in town who said, okay, time for a community garden. This is, we got to do something here. And, you know, it's those sorts of moves that are really going to change the world finally. It's really, it's, you know, really where we're at right now is this complete uh, opposition of unity consciousness versus separation consciousness. And you look at our government, it is 100% separation consciousness. And, and it's going to implode. I mean, you know, contraction can do nothing but finally implode. And then you've got a whole lot of people on this planet that really are into unity consciousness, that really want to benefit the people and make the people feel good, you know. And that switch has to be made. And it's like unity consciousness is 
beaming down on us. I mean, the energy of these times for transformation is really very, very exciting. And I think a lot of the the seers and the prophets at the time right now are saying, use the time. And but you have to very consciously pull on it, really consciously, like be in nature and say, okay, come on in, come in, come in, pull in this new consciousness. Has to be has to be a, a conscious decision to do it. We can't just hope it's going to rain on us. You know what I mean? No, I, I think all this requires a lot of um, self-inquiry, a little bit of work. It does not magically happen. Exactly. Um, right. B- but I think we've been given this gift of time to reassess what is important and what does matter. No, I find it very interesting because as you're up in Taos, I'm in Santa Fe. Uh, Santa Fe certainly is a very tourist-oriented um, town, and this is devastating for us. Yes, I know. I know. And, you know, individually, I can come back to individually again of what we can do with our minds. Another, you know, what got me through cancer was one line. Nothing can hurt you unless you give it the power to do so. And now I'm remembering where we were going before when I lost my track, which was you said I, that cancer gave me my future. I had this moment where I was trying to figure out what to do with my life. And all of a sudden, I saw the whole picture about how to give people the perspective that I learned from cancer in the Course in Miracles so that they could get through cancer easier, knowing that um, that there was all this help and other ways you can use your mind so that, you, that it, your health gets stronger. But the, the one line that, that got me through cancer was, nothing can hurt you unless you give it the power to do so. So that's the whole inquiry with clients is, how did I give this power? How am I giving this power to hurt me? Really important inquiry. And, and this is true for COVID also. Well, you know, one one of the um, things you, you often say that I think is just fascinating is belief comes first, then mm-hmm. perception. Right. Want right. to talk about that a little bit? Well, that's the 180 deg- degree shift that the Course in Miracles introduced. We all think that that what we perceive out there is acting on us, and we're at the effect of reality, external reality. But in fact... We're creating that reality. Our beliefs are creating that reality. And this is why this work is so, so important, is to begin to change our minds like that so we can create a better reality. Because no, I, I totally agree with you. I think perception is everything and how you frame things right. is everything. Absolutely. And I because everybody hits a bump in the road. And if you can use it as a learning experience, I mean, I've come to see all of life as a road trip. Exactly. And, yeah. You know, it's it's an adventure. You don't know what's around the around the curve, and you better be present and deal with it, whatever it is. And have your glider. <laughs> <laughs> Flying is probably. Let me, can I put it? Can I tell about this? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> Pat did her road trip um, around the United States, towing a glider, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> Anyway, go ahead. It was a midlife thing. <laughs> <laughs> Glorious, it must have been. It, yeah. it was pretty amazing. I mean, that's what caused me to move from the East Coast to the West Coast. Um, I used aviation as kind of my safety blanket in a perverse way, if you will. Very in that, <laughs> it was my, my my way to network and to find my get my feet down in a new life. Um, it was a very interesting period of time for me. I have to say, Um, as was cancer, I think cancer was a real game changer. And it was really cancer that forced me to look within as well, and really start to evaluate, what do you think? What impact does it have on your body? And I'm, uh, science shows that our thoughts impact our health, they impact our body. So what do you choose to think? And getting into a meditation practice has been a total game changer in that you, there's such peace and the ability to separate yourself from your thoughts. And that's something that I think as a society we really need. And perhaps COVID can offer us a little bit of that in that it is so forcing us into the present. Right, right. And I've been seeing it, COVID, but even before COVID, it seemed like the 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 whole press 
from the cosmos, if you will, was pushing us towards the present. And, um, and that, that, again, that was one of the great things about cancer is that I was so scared during so much of it. And now COVID is like, okay, you've dealt, you've, you've dealt with this kind of fear before. You don't have to, it's not nearly so scary for me as say cancer was. I agree. You know, that's interesting. Um, I've been mulling this over COVID versus cancer. And I don't find COVID all that scary, really, not relative to cancer. Right. And it's been very interesting to watch everybody's reactions and to just see how people cope. Um, it's a terrible, it's a terrible disease. You do not want to get it. However, um, for if you're healthy and you don't have a lot of comorbidities, you have a 99% chance of survival. So it's a very different for, 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 for COVID. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you, if obviously if you have comorbidities, if you're older, you, you can have huge issues with this. I'm sure I had this back in February. So did I, and I think. Yeah. yeah. On a scale of zero to 10, I was about a six. I had two nights where it was really hard to breathe and it was not pleasant. There's no right. question about it. Um, and I, I find it interesting as we, we work our way through this, to see collectively how our how our dialogue changes with it, how our fear r- rises and falls, um, how we deal with this enormous unknown in front of us, the void, yeah. yeah. And that's you know that's why I love your glider image. It's, it's like you were you were in the void, right? And I I really believe that all of life, we should be practicing for death because death is the ultimate leaping into the void. You have not one guarantee of what it's going to be on the other side of that. And that's how, if we keep jumping into the void in life, it's tremendous practice for the ultimate jump into the void, right? Do you agree? I I do. I totally agree. I think we need, in a society that rewards um, stuff, and things and yeah. prestige yeah. that goes with it. I think learning to be more present, more attuned emotionally and spiritually yeah. is yeah. the other side of the coin. And I think it's the most valuable side of the coin. Uh, and I, I, don't, I, I think it's where we want to live because that, that really is life. Life isn't all the external stuff. No, no, it really wasn't. I was, I was camping with my grandson this weekend and he's, you know, he's older, he's not a baby or anything. And, and had we been in a normal situation, he'd have been out shopping a whole lot, but we had, we, and it was thank God, you know, we just hung out under the trees. There was no, you know, boat trip we could take. There was, you know, and it was just beautiful. And they felt it, even they felt it, even though they'd want to be out there, you know, consuming they realized they were happier under the trees. I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with the future of travel. I mm. have to hope that some places that have become so oh, almost institutionalized destinations have a chance to regain some of their roots in history. Oh, yes. Look at Hawaii. It's not even, everybody's going, let's keep the tourists out forever. You know, when (laughs) Hawaii keeps out tourists, it changes radically. I was there during 9-11. Oh, the peace was unbelievable because no planes were coming in. Yeah. And leaving all kinds of tourists. So, But their whole economy is wrapped around tourism. So who knows? Yeah. No, and I think that's true for many places. I'm thinking Mm -hmm. of some of the beaches in Mm -hmm. Spain and um, a variety of places in Europe, certainly Santa Fe. How are, are we going to go back to what was? Do we want to go back to what was? Um, I think that there's a, a, a certain pull for humans to go back to the familiar, but I don't think mm. that, I think this is a good example of a case where you can't go back. You must go forward. Well, it's like with cancer, you know, that was the gift. You cannot stay in the familiar. And it's too cozy. You know, that's, that's what I tell my clients is like your comfort zone is your most dangerous place. <laughs> it should be avoided. <laughs> really? Isn't that true? I think it is. I think that if you're, I think as soon as you stay in your comfort zone, you get stuck. Mm-hmm. Um, you have a chance to uh, get stuck in repetitive habits that may not be good for you. You don't grow. And for me, there's a lack of adventure. Yes. I, one of the things that yeah. I need is, is some adventure. 
Uh huh. Uh-huh. And you can manufacture that in your day to day life. It doesn't have to be a grand adventure. Um, it can be a small adventure. Uh, one of the things I did is I bought a macro lens for my camera. Oh. So as the spring was unfolding and nobody was out, I was out walking every day. I took pictures of the flowers as well as you know a deserted Santa Fe. Um, and it was an interesting. It was interesting for me because I tend to be more strategic and broad in in my thinking. To have to stop and go st- go deep. It's and very meditative. Attention. Macro lenses are so meditative, aren't they? They're they're beautiful, oh, and they're, it's a totally them. it's a totally different skill set than anything I'd had before. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I had to learn to do things really differently, and mm-hmm. that was just a, a total gift. Yeah, yeah. Well, isn't that the metaphor? For what's going on right now, you're in macro mode. You're seeing the tiniest, tiniest little details of of life right now, rather than you know, okay, jumping on a plane and going someplace. Yeah, um, I think it's going to be interesting to see how we reopen. Um, hopefully, we're looking at reopening starting June first um, here in here in New Mexico. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Boy, will it ever! Uh, and, I, and I feel like all the bumps in the road that I've had to experience in my life, the Course in Miracles, all the meditation I've done, it's been geared for this time period. It's like, I'm going to need all those tools. I think we all are. We're going to need each other a lot. I I think we are going to need each other a lot. And I hope, it's funny though, COVID has created a lot of isolation. So how do you balance that isolation with the need for greater connection? Well, for me, it's really... I, I am li- isolated a lot anyway. And for me, it's um, magnified the need for connection for me. You know, I can, I can sort of put connection aside. I'm busy. You know, I've got all this stuff I've got to do. Uh, on the topic of connection versus isolation with COVID, um, do you think people will are, are getting more connected with themselves? I certainly think the opportunity is really there. I certainly hope people are because I think we use – socialization as a distraction, an enormous amount. And, you know, like you said before, I hope people are really reevaluating everything. And, you know, there is, I don't know about you, but I don't find comfort anywhere but meditation, really. And I ho- I'm hoping more people are going to find that. And that- No, I, 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 I totally agree. I think that's the, I think I find peace throughout the day, but I find it because of my meditation practice. Exactly. And the perspective it gives. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. But it's interesting, socialization as a distraction. I think that's very true. Um, I, I certainly, I have found through this that that is the piece of my life I miss the most. And I miss it greatly, partly because I'm an introvert by nature. And so I've had to work really hard to develop social networks and things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now they're largely gone. Not gone, but they're resting. <laughs> they're just resting. And how is that for you? Uncomfortable. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I think um, the part of the discomfort certainly is also the fact that I, from a business perspective, I've had a totally put cancer road trip on hold. Um, reimagine it to some degree, which I've been working on. Um, it has been a, this has been a big game changer. Yeah. 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 And you know, here's where the perspective is so essential. Like you've had this giant jolt, you've worked on this for years and put all yourself into it. Now you had a choice at that moment when all of this went down the tubes or put on hold or whatever was, were you going to blame yourself and think of all the reasons you should be punished right now, which is um, this is the, the value of understanding there are no neutral thoughts. Because where our ego wants to take us in a situation like cancer or some other giant bump in the road is, oh, you were bad and therefore you will be punished. It is so strong in each one of us to go to that place. And one of, oh, I love this. So to me, the probably the most powerful word in the English language is the word sin. And once upon a time, sin had a totally different meaning. And here's the 180 degree shift in reverse, really. Um, sin actually meant, um, it was an archery term, which meant missing the mark. So now you have a, met- a, you know, a paradigm of 
you know, you're trying to reach union with God or peace of mind or whatever it is. And the only way to do that is to make mistakes. So in our culture right now, you make a mistake and you, you, you're, you know, because of the way we raise children, you've got the guilt trip and then punishment. So this is what keeps going on in our psyches when we, we find disappointments and bumps in the road. We think it's our fault. We're being punished. It's come, all our karma, so to speak, is coming down on us. And this is a totally incorrect way of looking at things. And it causes us terrible, terrible pain. What is the origin, uh, um, origin of the word sin? Um, um, hamartia, which is a Greek word, and it meant it was an um, archery term which meant missing the mark. And I love that. It's like, we have to make mistakes. It's like, you you've screwed up again. <laughs> and okay, I'm definitely not going to do that again. If we learn from our mistakes instead of, so what, what guilt does is it tries to have us not think about our mistakes. It, it condemns us first and then don't think about it. But if you inquire into it, you begin to see that guilt is the killer. Guilt is absolutely the killer. And that's where I work in my therapy practice is to begin to alleviate that enormous pressure of guilt. And guilt is what causes our thoughts to go so negative and to think, oh, I'll never get out of this. Oh, it's never going to work out for me, blah, blah, blah. Is because we don't feel we deserve the best because we've forgotten our connection to the best, to the highest, so to speak. And forgotten that and we're the, part of that, right? Yeah, and the best is not the stuff around us. The best is very internal. It is indeed. And spiritual. It is yeah. indeed. And I think one of the greatest initiations we can go through is to lose everything and still remember the glory of who we are. Not have a single thing on the outside reflecting you know, our, our goodness, not one person going, whoa, you're wonderful. Not one job, you know, clapping for you and honoring you, but, you know, just learning to do that just for yourself. is a huge, huge thing. If you could distill this down to some advice you would give to anybody facing a bump in the road, what advice would you give them? Well, for sure. The one about this has come to you for your benefit. And let's start looking at all the benefits. And that's where you need to keep your mind focused. If you start thinking about all the, you know, hardship you're going to go through and all the reasons you deserve this, you're going to be in real trouble. But you have an opportunity with this bump to rise yourself up. Every single bump in the road is a wake up call. It's saying, please, here, let's help you wake up, even if it means causing you some pain, because that's the only way we learn, sadly, is through hardship and suffering. It's like, okay. So that and um, nothing can hurt you unless you give it the power to do so. I think that's absolutely the most powerful sentence I've ever heard in my life, really. It's, and it constantly reminds me that I have the power and I am bringing it all on myself and only I can change that. So those are the two big ones, I think. Do you have any others to add to that? No, I, I, I'm a devotee of, of your train of thought. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I admire it enormously because I think that there's so much profound wisdom in it. And um, it takes work. But oh, the, boy, does it ever. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and it's unending. It's, it's a lifetime journey. Exactly. But, you know, it's funny. I always ask everybody, if you could rewrite your story, would you? And I, I know what your answer is going to be, but I'll ask the question. I know. It's so funny. That one really stuck with me when you put it in your notes. I'm, I'm still kind of pondering it. I'm like, on the one hand, it was, it's been really tough. But on the other, it got me to this place. It's like, I always bemoan the fact that I didn't have any parents that paid any attention to me. And then I realized it forced me to talk to something higher and to look for advice from a higher source. So it was for my benefit. Now I can see my entire life has been that. And all that suffering has been towards bringing me closer to God, really. I mean, I can't say it any other way. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you found something in today's podcast that inspires you along your own life path, because sometimes a bump in the road is actually a portal into a more conscious and meaningful life. 
Bump in the Road is a production of Cancer Road Trip. Subscribe to the podcast, follow us on social media at Cancer Road Trip, and you can learn more at www.cancerroadtrip.com. Until next time, be safe and be well.